comes back to my co-host, Deborah from Inside Edition. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. What a great way to start the day. Yeah, we've got a great show today. Uh, if you are a fan of Dallas, uh, you are going to love this. Uh, yeah. Patrick Duffy is, uh, is here. Um, the, uh, the stars of, uh, of Dallas. I'm so excited because I, Linda Gray's here. I'm, I grew up watching Dallas and it's back on the air. It's a huge hit. And I watched last night. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's my fun. God. It's Bobby fun. has got so much dirt that's been dumped in his lap. He's going to have so much fun. And, and Sue Ellen's got a lot of stuff she's got to deal with. It's really There's good. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, also, we have a, you're going to meet a young man, a brave teenager who came out to his entire school. Uh, all of it was on videotape. Uh, we'll tell you the reaction he's getting. And um, also from, uh, from uh, the Food Network, Ann Burrell, I hate Brussels sprouts. You are crazy. How did, okay, when you were a little boy, how did your mom make them? Well, uh, first or of all, how did your my, mo cook my make mom them? did not make them. But uh, no, uh, the only time I think how, I had Brussels sprouts. No, make no, them? I had Brussels sprouts once, and they were like boiled and ste or steam. Right. They were disgusting. They are disgusting, disgusting that way. There's a yes. good way to do it, and Anne's going to show us. Well, she's going to show us how to. Yeah, I. They asked me what food I would not eat, and I was like, I will never have Brussels sprouts again. And so. I apparently I'm going to have them today. But, never say uh, never. Never say never. Yeah. So I, I, so I, yesterday I was in a panic. I was off Twitter all day yesterday because I lost my iPhone in a cab, and this is the first time I've lost my phone. You've never lost. I a mean, phone? I've lost a phone in the past, but not a phone that like I'm, this is the first time I've only recently had the iPhone. So it's the first time I, like I've had all my pictures on it, and. But you have it locked, right? The iPhone. You sound so old. It's an iPhone. <laughs> Whatever. Like the just Twitter. Say, I lost my phone. I lost my phone. <laughs> and I panicked because of all my pictures are on there and I have not downloaded any of them. What kind of pictures have you got on no, there? There's no, <laughs> no. There's no. Nothing bad. Nothing Good. bad. Okay. But, but when you lose your phone, you do suddenly, you're like, Oh my God, what text messages have I, you know, you run oh, through. You go through panic. Yes, you, you panic, panic. Like, what conversations have I had with people on? on Do you, you know? have the Find My Phone thing so you could go on your Mac or your iPad and track it? I, I, no. <gasps> Are yeah, you crazy? I know, I know. And I've done reports on the Find My Phone thing, and I know I'm supposed to have it. I don't know how to put these things on my phone. Okay, um, Anderson also doesn't know how to do a lot of other things. I don't know how to download music phone. from uh, the iTunes. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a private <laughs> iPhone lesson and teach him how to do some of this stuff. But this is what you need to do. I, on your, I lost my phone. My phone, I don't know if it'll show it. You know what? I don't want my phone numbers on national TV. Right. Um, but on my screensaver, uh -huh. I have, if found, please call. I've got my office number and my oh, really? husband's office number. Oh, that's smart. So that someone can see this and go, oh, and then it says the magic words, reward for return. That's a good idea. Yeah. But there is this thing like find your phone. And also there's some app where you can like erase everything on your that's phone. That's on the find my phone. My phone got stolen, believe it or not, from my studio. Oh, really? I, was, wow. I felt so violated. And I watched my phone go to an apartment in the Bronx. And I saw it spend the night there. And Are you I went, serious? Really? I went to my I went to my police precinct. I said, I found my phone. Here it is. I showed them where it is. I said, Will you go get it? The lady at the police station said, No, but you're welcome to. I said, No, you're the police. That's a criminal. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. They they won't do that. And now that. a huge number of the robberies involve iPhones and Apple products. Yeah, in, in right. The city. I mean, at least it, you I'm did you get it back? You got it I back. Did. There yes, it is. Yes, this very nice cab driver. Um, I I called the phone instantly, like sure. a million times. I was at the gym. I borrowed a friend's phone. I kept calling. No one picked up, uh, and, and, and the lady, my housekeeper, uh, she called too, and, and the guy picked up for her for some reason, and he brought it back to, uh, brought it back to my house. That's so amazing. I didn't get his name, so I just want to thank the cab driver very much for, for doing that. Doesn't that make you feel so good that they're actually honest people and, uh, and you didn't was, even get a chance to give them a reward? Or well, anything? no, I did give her, I got him a, re okay. a reward, but I, I just didn't get his name, so I That's wanted to wonderful. thank him. Yeah, we, I, held, I, I would have him on the show to thank him so much. I was so relieved. Not that there's anything that precious on there, but like, I don't know. You just get nervous. You do get nervous, and and you worry that somebody's going to somehow figure out how to get in there. But you got to have the Find My Phone app. Yeah. You can down. It's for free. It's like every time I see a police officer, I get a little nervous because I feel like maybe there's something I have done <laughs> that somehow that person is going to realize, and I'm going to get arrested. Raise your hand if you feel the same way. Do you it guys just feel that way? The you know what? It really is true. And I know I'm I'm blameless. It's the same reason <laughs> when I go into a store, I think the people think I'm shoplifting, and I. I it's really true. And I go, I bend, I like make a whole production if I 
get like a, you know, a couple of shirts, I'll be like, look, I have three shirts. I'm going to go as if, well, I don't know why they would think I'm stealing. We got audited one year from the IRS, uh -huh. and that is the most horrible thing. You get that letter from the tax man, and, and so they went through, and it was one of those where they go through every little aspect of your financial right. life. It ended up, we are so scrupulously honest, they owed us money. Oh, that's good. Nice. But I still get that letter, and you know, you see the blue light, or you're just crossing the street, and you think, like here at, at uh, where the broadcast center where we do your show and right, my right. show, we have to cross the street and we jaywalk every day. Uh huh. And sometimes we jaywalk right in front of those police officers, and I am always worried <laughs> that they're going to arrest, arrest uh, me, and I'm going to be late doing my uh -huh. show. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, they haven't yet. Amy Bays on Twitter says there's an app where it takes a pic when the wrong passcode is put in yes. and emails you the picture in case it's stolen. That's a genius app. Yeah. Wow. I want to find. I want to. I, not that I would know how to <laughs> download the, that app. Here's what the search would be for: a hideous person with three chins. Right. Because well, we're that, all looking not, like this yeah, when you're looking it's not at very, your phone. But um, yeah. No, there are all these great apps, and I, I, to be honest, I just don't know how to download. Them. I mean, I, this is pathetic that I, I and I'm like tech savvy and stuff. You're going to get so many emails and tweets from people who are going to tell you step one, step two, step three. You're going to be so yeah. educated if you'll just read your emails. That's the other thing is that uh, Private Dixit said, uh, back up your pictures to iCloud. Again, a great idea, but I don't know what the iCloud is. I mean, I know it's floating up there. Your iCloud I, is automatically doing that. I don't you, know who iCloud is. Setting. I've never met them. I don't. I, 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 in my mind, I envision a cloud with all my pictures floating around, and I like the, the idea of that. Anderson, I just don't know like how to get the cloud. Grandparent. I know. You're sounding so old and I know. stodgy. I feel, I feel old and stodgy. I am old and stodgy. You're not old and stodgy. I am. You know, it's true. Technically, you may be, though. Yeah, it's very sad. There's this viral video I just want to show people that's uh, everywhere today, and I'm not sure it's real. I, 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 we'll show the people. Yeah, we'll, we'll show the video. That. It's allegedly of a toddler being held down by his mother while getting a tattoo. Yeah, look, look, yeah. She's saying in Spanish, mira, mira, and I mean, it looks real, but uh, to me it's just so horrific that I feel like what parent would know. actually do that? I think this might be a, a viral version of catfishing, you know, really? where instead of falling in love with somebody, they but want you to believe that it this looks is really pretty, happening. I don't, do you guys think it's real? Yes. yes. You really do? That is sick. It's really horrible. I mean, the idea that someone would give their toddler tattoos. Just... They claim that it's from Cuba. We don't know. Yeah. This is, you know, the wild, wild west of the internet. You know yeah. what this stuff is, if it's for real or not. Yeah. Just, the yeah. other thing that was big on uh, on Twitter yesterday, which I missed because I my phone was driving around in the, in the New York City cab, um, was Hulk Hogan tweeted out kind of another creepy photo of his daughter. His daughter's 24 now. This is the picture he tweeted out saying, basically, Brooks, Brooks legs. legs. Woohoo! And he had previously tweeted out, a, was it him who tweeted that picture or someone took a picture of him putting, putting sunscreen sun, sun oil on his daughter? On yeah, his do daughter. we have that picture? Um, which is... Now look at that. I'm sorry, that's just not appropriate. Look where daddy's hand well, is. That's the other, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. Nobody's hand should be that close to that unless you're putting diaper cream on. And <laughs> that's just, no, yeah. inappropriate. But here's the deal. That's the way that family has always been. They had that crazy reality TV show. They've had multiple divorces and marriages, and they mm. all have bleached blonde hair, mothers, fathers, boyfriends, and daughters. This is what they do. This is how they get publicity, and I guess they make money from it. I guess. I, I, I'm, does he wear a do-rag all the time? Is that, is, yeah, because yeah? he doesn't have hair. Really? Yeah, he doesn't have hair. He's bald on the top. Oh. So it covers up the baldness. Oh, it's well. his look. It works That's for him. That's his look? That's his look, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure that look works anymore. I feel like at a certain point, you got to, anyway. You know, if you've got a statement, you got to stick with you it. you got to stick with it. All right, we got to take a quick break. We're going to more of the first 15, including a new twist, actually, in the Jean-Benet Ramsey murder mystery. We'll be right back. My co-host, Kevin Norville from Inside Edition. So you were recently doing the Golden Globes. Yeah. You are doing the red carpet. How doing is red that? Carpet. Oh, it's so much fun. First of all, you get to look like a celebrity. You get to put on the fancy dress, and you get to borrow the earrings. And so three times a year, I get to play Cinderella, the Golden Globes, the Emmy Awards, and coming up in a couple of weeks, the Oscars. Uh -huh. Oh, so, so, you, so you go to the Oscars? Yeah, I get to okay. go to the Oscars. And the Golden Globes, though, was the fun one, because first of all, the stars know that they're going to be drinking the whole time that they're at the <laughs> so Golden they're, right. Globes. So they're I, right, I heard they don't even really serve food. There's it's just no food. Yeah. No wonder 
sure they're, you know, sloshed almost, <laughs> right. in a bad word, sloshed when they go up on stage because they've been drinking champagne uh, all the time. In fact, they have people with champagne before they even get into really? the, um, the wow. theater. Really? Nice. Um, but it's great. So you, so the whole thing is like you, you yell at this, I'm dressed up really nice, and my mom taught me not to yell, but you're... Right, right. Liza, she's not there, but uh, Angelina, Brad, George, you know, you're screaming all these celebrities' uh, names, trying to get them to come to you because you are limited right. to how far you can go. So Victor Garber comes up to me, right. among many other stars. Victor Garber, who's in the movie Argo. Who's in the movie Argo, there he is. He's right. so handsome, and he plays the he's Canadian a lovely, he's ambassador. He's a really nice guy. Let me tell you what a nice guy he is. Uh -huh. So he's, NBC carries the globe, so they always have some of their shows that are going to be debuting shortly. Right. Victor Garber is on a new show with another actor. The two of them are working the red carpet. I thought it was Hugh Bonneville from Downton Abbey, which oh, is Oh, Lord like, Grantham. For Lord Grantham, one of my favorite shows. Look at this. They sort of look the same. Uh, uh, look at the ears. The ears are identical. Well, also, the guy on the right who's Lord Grantham, that's his real-life picture. When he's dressed as Lord Grantham, he looks even more like Victor Garber. In black tie, mind right. you. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. does look like, yeah. you know, each other. So I'm talking to Victor Garber, and I'm asking him all these questions about Downton Abbey. He finally says, let me stop you before you embarrass oh, yourself that's, that's anymore. Great, that's great. He said, I'm Victor Garber. Went, oh, my God, you're amazing at Argo and I've met the ambassador who you uh, played so I, I thought he very well. skillfully um, switched. Then he told me a story. He said this is not the first time it's happened. He said I was at a party once and Bryant Gumbel came up to me and started talking very familiar and da 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 uh, da da. He said then I realized he thought I was your husband. And my husband, Carl Wellner, had, there he is. Well, that's your husband on the right. That's so funny. Can you see how the mistake could be made? Wow. I mean, they all have sort of roundish faces. I think the one with the gray hair and the bow tie is the best looking. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so. I once, um, I was, uh, I once moderated a, uh, one of the presidential debates back, this was a while ago when um, uh, General, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Stockton? No. Um, Schwarzkopf? I can't believe I started. Who was telling running this story. for president? Yeah, it was like I mean, Al Sharpton was running, and um, and if you know what, I'm totally blanking on the name, so forget. Don't the story. you hate that? that well, maybe it's not just the phone in which you're a real senior. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> is, yes, I really do think I'm losing my mind. I think my memory has gotten so bad lately. But you know why? It is because of these things. Is we are so it's, yeah. scattered. We're you know you're Wesley talking, Clark. you're tweeting. That's who it was. Oh, General. Anyway, Clark. so I just moderated this debate. And there's after the debate, there's a thing called the spin room where right. where, pe where reporters wait to interview the candidates and, and their surrogates. Anyway, so I went into the spin room and I had moderated this debate and it was like General Wesley Clark and John Kerry. There, it was a Democratic primary debate and there were like eight candidates at the time. And I walk in there and all this uh, this Italian reporter comes up to me and starts asking me this lengthy question about Israel and and uh, Palestinian territories and. I'm like, why is he asking me this question? And then I realize he thinks I'm General Wesley Clark. That's so cool. General Wesley Clark had gray hair. That's so and I, cool. And I almost answered the question as General Clark because I sort of knew how Clark would answer it, but I didn't want to cause like an interaction. You know what? Sometimes it's easier to just go along with to the just mistake. Just go along with yes. Yes. You know, yes. don't make them feel bad. That, that's right. Yeah. Um, there's there's actually news in the the Jean Benet Ramsey case, which is incredible. I mean, it's incredible that 16 years after her murder, we still don't know. What happened yesterday? It was revealed. A, a local paper in Colorado revealed that a grand jury back in 1999, I guess it was, right. had actually met and decided to indict her parents in the murder. Now they said the grand jury didn't say they knew who did it or what happened, but they just thought there was enough evidence to indict the parents. But the district attorney at the time decided there was not enough evidence, so did not. Uh, move forward and this is indictment. really causing a big stir because a lot of people are saying, "Wait a second, why is the district attorney making the judgment on his own that this is not a case that should come before a jury?" Isn't that what the legal system is right. all about? Twelve men and women hear all the evidence; they make a decision. A grand jury decided there was enough evidence to return indictments, yeah. and he decided not to press charges. So yeah, I think you're going to hear more about this. And, and the district attorney at the time said that he did not believe the grand jury that there was enough evidence. And the lawyer for for the uh, for uh, Mr. Ramsey, Mr. Ramsey is no longer alive, you know, has subsequently come forward and said the district attorney made the right call because DNA tests later on after the grand jury cleared both Ramseys. There was DNA. Under the little girl's fingernails, fingernails and on some underwear. Right, underwear as well that did not match anybody in the Ramsey family. And in fact, in 2008, the then district attorney um, issued an apology right, to, to the Ramsey right. family, uh, Mrs. Ramsey. But it's incredible um, that, I, I mean, I just find it died. amazing that 16 years later, we still don't know 
what happened? Well, you know what? As a mom, it terrified all of us as parents. Um, Jean Benet was the same age as my oldest son. Mm. Jean Benet would be graduating from college right wow. now if she were still alive. And the idea that on Christmas night somebody came into this family's home and killed this child, whether it was an inside job or just some random person, yeah. uh, was so terrifying that it made it very difficult, I think, for a lot of parents at that time to just not you know, just hold their kids well, like this and let them go freely as right. children should do. And I remember Mr. Ramsey going on CNN saying there's a killer on the loose and, and oh, yeah. it was again, huge. 16 years later, still uh, still unsolved. Uh, coming up, a great story. A young man who came out in front of his entire school, took a lot of courage. He got an unexpected reaction from the crowd. He's sharing his story next. We'll be right back.